Hey everyone, before we start, I just want to talk about Jarvan's items and runes. And the first item that I would go for is Black Cleaver. Cleaver is really good at Jarvan right now because it provides him with HP, damage, ability haste, as well as armor shred, which synergizes well with his first skill, allowing them to stack one over the other. Then the next item that I would go for is Divine Sunder, another good booster item allowing Jarvan to become tanky as well as deal more damage. Sunder provides him with HP, damage, as well as additional burst with the Sheen passive. Then the next item that I would go for is Steel Plated Stasis, another great item onto Jarvan, allowing him to buy more time, going in with the Flag and Drag, Ultimate, press the Stasis, so that the opponents would not be able to focus you down since you are invulnerable. Another alternative for this would be the Gargoyle Stone Plate, wherein it's much cheaper, provides you with a lot of armor, but the weakness of this, if the opponent buys Serpent's Fang, then its effect would be greatly reduced. Then the next item depends on the enemy team composition. If they have no Serpent's Fang user, you could go for the Sterex Gauge. Or if you're snowballing the game, Death Dance is another great alternative, providing you with damage as well as tankiness in your kit. After this would be the Guardian Angel, providing you with a second life, allowing you to buy even more time for your team. And at this stage of the game, you're more of a tank rather than a damage dealer. Last item depends on the team composition. If they are AD heavy, you could go for the Randomance Omen. If they are AP heavy, you could go for the Force of Nature. Or you could even go for the War Monks if they have a lot of poke in their kit. So Jarvan is one of the most flexible champions and he has a lot of item builds that you can do. So it's up to you on what you want to build. Going to the runes, the first rune that I will go for is Conquer. Jarvan can stack this pretty easily. It also allows him to have more damage as well as getting an Omnivamp when at max stacks. Next rune that I would go for is Triumph. This is really good if you want to be a carry Jarvan since you have a lot of burst in your kit. If you're able to take down a target, you would get your HP back. But another alternative would be Weakness. You could easily crowd control the opponents with the use of the Smite, your second skill, or even the Flag and Drag combo. So it's up to you on what you want. But I would go for the Triumph since I would want to carry my teams in solo queue. The, the third rune that I would go for is Hunter Titan. This is a great rune if they have a lot of crowd control. But if they don't have much CC, you could go for the conditioning so that you would be tankier when it comes to the late game. Last rune that I would go for is Pathfinder. Jarvan has really strong ganking and Pathfinder would enhance this a lot more, allowing his ganks to become even better. But an alternative for this would be Mastermind. If you think you have a strong early game and you could snowball the game by getting objectives, Mastermind would allow you to secure those objectives faster. So that is it for Jarvan's runes and items and I will see you guys in game. Going to the game, I'm going to be showing you how to play Jarvan as a DPS stack. In this matchup, we're currently up against Gragas, and in a Jarvan vs Gragas matchup, this is pretty much advantageous towards the Jarvan in the early stage of the game, but once it gets to the mid to late, this would favor the Gragas due to the possible late game damage potential that he has. So what we want to do is try to snowball the early game as much as possible, and in order to do that, we have to be active in ganking. And in order to become active in ganking, one of the best starts that we could do in the jungle is starting the red buff. Because Jarvan has le strong level 2 damage potential, we can flex to a lot of things. We could go for a red side clear, we could go for a level 2 gank, or we could even invade the blue of the opposing jungler. And while clearing the red buff, I'm looking at the options that I could possibly go for. And looking at the bot side, seeing if the Yone and Renekton might fight. If they don't fight, I could go for the Krugs. But as soon as I see them go for an all-in at level 1, I go for the level 2 gap. Look for the Flag and Drag, get the Yone down, and get easy 450 gold. So very good level 2 gank. And Jarvan is one of the few champions that could do this because of the skill kit that he has. Other champions that can do this is probably Sin Zhao and Lee Sin. Because what junglers would want to usually do is try to get level 3 before ganking because that way they would have 3 skills which would make their gank percentage a lot higher. So after going for a gank, I go for the Raptors instead. I see that Gragas' clear is a bit slow so I might be able to catch him in the Scuttler. And looking at the lane, these are top and mid don't have much priority. Galios positioning well in the scuttle crab i make a mistake trying to contest the scuttle even though i have the, the stronger jungle matchup i get pincered i am forced to flash we force gragas to flash as well our bot lane comes and tries to help me and i since i have no more hp i decide to just go back because if gragas decides to invade then i would not be able to contest so that is one mistake that i did 
I have to always look at my lanes. Even though I have the priority in the jungle matchup, the laners will always decide who wins the scuttle fight. So here, I see that Gragas and Thresh are trying to steal my blue. I don't have smite yet, so what I want to do is try to take down the Gragas because I know that he has no more flash. Lucian comes from behind, gets a good flank, Fizz flashes in, pokes the Gragas with a third skill. We're able to take him down, and even though they're able to take my blue, it's worth. I check if Galio wants to go for the face check. Galio doesn't proceed, and we go back and clear our jungle. So we get a 2-0 start, even though we don't get our blue, we're able to take down the Graga, so we get the blue buff. The blue buff transfer is complete. Top side is there's a fight, and this is how you should be proactive with Jarvan. You would always want to prioritize ganking over farming because this is ganking is our specialty, and Jarvan is one of the champions that excels at camping enemy lanes. So here, what I want to do is try to get my level 5, and as soon as I get my level 5, I go back, buy my Kindle Gem, and possibly go for a gank. If I'm not able to gank the bot lane, I would go for a clear instead. So Yon and Renekton decide to fight each other, Renekton gets a solo kill, Galio's a bit late, forces the flash, and I'm here for the counter initiate. Gragas gets an ulti in that gets our Renekton down, but me and Fizz are here for the help. Gragas, we block the body slam. I still have my ultimate. What I'm doing, I try. I know that Gragas has no flash. I unfortunately miss my flag and drag combo, but in the end, we're able to take Gragas down. The reason why I didn't use my ult because I know that Gragas has no flash from earlier, and he already used his body slam, so he has no other means to escape. Escape. In case. The opponent wants to help, such as Galio. I still have my ultimate to trap, and that is why I don't use my ultimate. When clearing the jungle, it's, it's jungle clear is very basic. You'd always want to use your third plus first skill. Your third skill provides you with attack speed, passive attack speed, and when you use it, you would get even more attack speed. And one trick about Jarvan is that he is one of the easiest champions to get an assist, because if you drop your flag, your whole team gets attack speed, and... If they are able to get kills, you would easily get assists even though you didn't deal any damage. Just because you're able to buff your opponent or er, teammates rather with attack speed. And another good thing about Jarvan is the double penetration that he possibly has. Once I complete the cleaver, I would have armor shred by using the black cleaver and then additional armor shred with my first skill. So assuming my flag and drag hits, I would be able to stack a lot of uh, I would be able to remove the opposing team's armor as fast as possible, allowing my me and my team to deal maximum damage. With Dragon spawning soon, I'm very confident we could, we could contest. We have a pretty good early game for one, and we have two kills as well. Black Lever plus Boots. I put a ward just in case. Try to pull with the first skill, save my flag. I use it in, to provide my team with attack speed. I make. I think this is a uh, mistake because I should have pulled the dragon. And as when I pull the dragon, I want to take down the Jarvan, but I auto target my ultimate on the Ezreal, so they're able to take the dragon. But overall, at least we're still able to get two kills. So it's a bit of a misplay. What I wanted to do there is to try and ulti the Gragas and then last hit the dragon. Unfortunately, it went automatically to the Ezreal because he has a bit of low HP. Once I see the team is still winning, even though we lost the fight, we still, even though we lost the objective rather, we still won the fight getting a 4 for 1 exchange. So I go immediately to the Herald, try to go for the, uh, try to take it as soon as possible because I know that my team has a good early game lead. Just in case Gragas tries to come, I would have a lot. My teammates are already here, and we easily secure the Rift Herald. Renekton flashes in, stuns the Gragas. I don't have my ultimate yet. I look for a good chance to go. With the flag and drag, we take down the Gragas. Yone has his ultimate, uh, his third skill rather. We trap him with our ultimate. Renekton decides to go to the side instead of just running back to the base. So he gets taken down. A bit of a misplay from his side. I could have saved him, but Renekton Rebel. decided to go too close. Since I was able already, I was already able to trap the Yone. But it's still all good because not only are we able to get kills, we're also able to get a tower. Completing my Sunder, 
this would make me even tankier as well as deal a lot of damage as well. So we're into the point wherein our opponent can't ignore us because of the possible damage that we could break. Top side is a bit extended. I tried to take the scuttler before going for a gank, but as soon as I see the stretch is low, look for possible ganks. Ezreal is out of position. I use my third skill of the Galio, ultimate the Ezreal, and then use my first skill to go back just in case the opponent is there. Pretty clean move. Removing their ADC, helping our team as well. And currently we're 505. And as much as possible, when we get an early lead such as this, we would want to build as much damage as possible. Because Jarvan is one of the champions that's very flexible. If you are behind early, you could just go for a pure tank build, wherein you go for a black lever, sterox, then stone plate, and buy time for your team. But in this game, we're pretty ahead. Sunder is already complete once I go home and we're ready for the next objective. So what I'm doing right now is checking when the dragon is spawning. It's still in a minute and a half. So what I do here is I go for my bot camp since I just cleared my top camps. Fizz is playing a bit greedy. Tries to go for the blue but he's able to go out, get away safely. And now what I'm doing here is clearing the Red Krog's Raptor and then positioning onto the dragon if possible. Unless there's a fight which is happening in the mid side, this is Siz is going home and I check for any possible catches. I see Galio move around a bit and then I proceed to my Krogs for the clear. And with dragon spawning in less than in about 40 seconds, this would be the perfect time for me to go to the top side because I've already cleared by both side camps. When an objective is spawning, you'd always want to clear the Danger. opposite camps so that you so that they would spawn again way. after taking the objective. A fight happens on top side. Galio uses ultimate, Lucian uses his ultimate as well. Uh, uh, nothing happens. I see that there is a fight on top side. They're trying to take down our Sona. Sona goes down. Me and Fizz are there for the backup. It's a uh, hits the ultimate. I follow up with the flag and drag to cancel the lantern, go for the ulti, to take down the Galio, and with the first skill plus the auto attacks time dealing, we deal a lot of damage, getting a 4 um, four, four, 2 exchange. Unfortunately, Fizz goes down to the tower, but overall, we still win the fight. Renekton is just holding the lane bot side. He should have an advantage towards Yone since Yone is a scaling champion. What happens here is a take the scuttle crab, go home, and go back to the dragons in the spawning 20 seconds. Good dodge by our Renekton. And I think he is able to take down the Yone. If not, unfortunately, he gets outplayed. But we still get the advantage because we take down the top tower. And with dragon spawning in 5 seconds, this would give us enough time to prepare for this objective. So what I want to do is try to wait for the Renekton to respawn and then go for the... and try to force the fight. Since I'm pretty tanky with the Sunder plus Cleaver, I also have my Zonia just in case they decide to focus fire me. Fizz goes down to the Herald, sees two of their members. So this prompts me to go for the Dragon. And as soon as I see Gragas go down, I try to go for the burst kill, burst, first kill plus ultimate. Unfortunately, Gragas does a great cast, pushes me on the edge, which is out of my smite range and allows the opponent to free hit me. So we go down, Fizz comes for the rescue. Jonas tried to get some kills, Lucian is still alive. Ezreal full HP. Fizz is trying to poke down the Galio, gets taunted. We lose the fight, we lose the objective, and this is not good because we're, we also have a streak and we gave it away to the opponent. So this is not over. Our Even though I'm able to snowball the early game, I still need to keep up with the... I still have to keep up the pace because the opponent has a strong scaling composition with the Ezreal plus Yone. So the, they're starting the... The referral, I tried to go for the steal but they're able to take it down on time. I use Zonya to buy time for my team to come. Galio is a bit low. Unfortunately, as much as possible, I would want to chase him down but the opponent might be there and I don't want to risk any possible throws. 
what I'm doing right now is just clearing the camps. My bot camps are up. Probably take the Krugs plus red and then go back, look for another play. So you'd always want to be proactive with playing with playing with Jarvan. As soon as I have my ultimate, I would most probably go for another gank. Or if there's a fight happening, such as in mid lane, then I would be there to support my team. For now, I just want to focus on taking the red buff. Lucian gets goes down. My team is placed in an awkward position and this is not good because the opponents are have a chance to come back into the game. I place a control ward just in case it's warded. I poke the Galio a bit. Look at the damage that I'm dealing. 2 hits, 3 hits, 4 hits. Already half HP. Pretty low. Renekton gets a last hit but it's okay because I'm pretty tanky and I'm pre very very strong at this stage of the game. The, item that the next item that I'm building is Death Dance because as you could see, not only do I have a lot of HP, I, I'm also able to burst those tanky target targets such as Galio with the itemization that I have. Death Dance allows me to get lifesteal when I take down a target and it makes me a bit more tanky as well. Yone tries to 1v1 our Fizz. I poke the Yone a bit, stretch hooks the blue buff, we force Yone's flash and that is worth it. Because this would allow me to trap Yone in the next possible clash that might happen. My ult is up in five, uh, 5 seconds. And one thing about Jarvan, another tip, is that his third skill has a really big range. And it can be easily used for possible face checks. So if you don't know where the opponent is, you just throw a third skill onto the bush. The range is pretty long. And here I see that I tried to look for a punish of the Ezreal. And as soon as I see that it fails, I decide to go for the flag and drag away. Fizz goes down onto the Yone. I'm forced to go back as well since I'm very low. And the, the, currently the tempo is at the is being held by the opponent. But this should not I should not yet be discouraged because overall we are still leading. It's just that the our pace got a bit slower than usual. So what I'm doing right right now is try to farm magic resist items. As you could see, the Galio plus Gragas are dealing tons of damage and building magic resist would negate would as, would negate the damage as much as possible. The next thing that I'm doing right now is probably looking for a play since all of my camps are down. Cover mid while waiting for a fight and look for possible targets. So Jarvan is a really strong uh, has high damage in the early stage of the game, but once it gets to this point, we're in the 15 minute mark where people complete their 3 items, Jarvan becomes more of a tank. Another fight happens both sides. Galio and Yone try to take down our fist, lives with 1 HP. Look for the chase, but 3 of their members are missing, which is good that I stopped myself because if I tried to force the chase, then I would have gotten CC'd and they might have gotten Baron. So we just play a bit safe, try to go for a clear. Take down the cannon, wait for the fist to come and help because we're currently in a 4v side situation and it's something that and our fight would not it would not be favorable for us. Lucian gets caught by the Gragas, so we're forced to give away the tower. Yon is pushing our mid lane and things are not going too well for us. So what I'm thinking right now is looking for possible lanes to gank, and since Yon is alone at the mid side. Go for the flag and drag plus ultimate. Even though it takes down the tower, we're able to take down, get the Yone down. And luckily, Dragon has spawned at the same time. So this opens up to get the Dragon. And as you know, Gragas was able to steal the first two Dragons. And if there's and if he's able to get this Dragon, then it would be very, very hard for us to win the game. So what I'm doing right now is try to catch the Gragas. Look for him. This bursts him down and this would secure the dragon for us. So we deny the third possible third dragon of the opponent. And this allows us to... This gives us breathing space since their jungler is down as well. So what I'm doing right now is try to look for any possible pick potential. Since their jungler is respawning, this would allow us to possibly take the baron. And what we want to do is mind, games the, mind, mind game the opponent into face checking the bush. Unfortunately, Thresh is there so he knows that we're not going for the Baron. So what I do is I go for the Rift Cutler instead. Because Cut is really good, important as well since it's something that cannot be rewarded. So use my Flag and Drag to go back. 
and looking at the skill lead even though we were leading early it's quite close right now we only have a 7 7k gold lead as i said a while ago what i'm building right now is magic resist going for the visage instead of force of nature because uh sona is there and i would want to um, make her heals even higher so that's the reason why i went for the visage instead of the force of nature because if our team doesn't have much healing then i would just go for the fort the next thing that i'm i'm doing here right now is trying to look for any possible pickoffs jarvan is really good at catching opponents top side Fizz and yone are fighting each other Fizz gets an outplay really important solo kill because if yone was able to take down our Fizz, then our pressure would be gone again and this would be favorable towards the opponent so if we're able to get the yone down this gives us a lot of breathing space and i want as much as possible i would want to take mid tower ezreal out of position fresh hooks us we boost our ultimate onto the galio we force galio's flash as well and this is quite a position we try to start the baron just in case they don't come i see that fresh ezreal and gragas are at the vicinity so what I'm thinking right now is if I should go for a turn or I should go, go for the finish. Decide to go for the turn. Try to look for the Gragas. Gets a lot of knock up. We knock up the Ezreal. Use Zonyu to buy time. And then go immediately to the Baron. First plus smite. Get the secure. Get a lot of kills as well. Use our flag and drag to chase the Gragas. Our teammates use their flash to chase him down. Yonet TPs in. Uses the ultimate. I use my ultimate as well. As a gap closer, even though Yone is able to escape or ulti, we still have the flag and drag to follow up. So very clutch Baron steal from us. And since we ace the opponent, we still have a creep wave bot, and this was would most probably spell GG. 20 seconds, Lucian is still alive. Lucian can take down towers pretty quickly. I try to go and tank the wave. I just wait for the wave to go in instead. 10 seconds still here. I use the flag to provide not only me attack speed, it also provides attack speed for my ADC. With the uh, spawns in 5 seconds, Fizz is able to TP as well and we're able to secure the win. Overall, I think we did great. Aside from the two mists, Mist Dragon, we played what we, we did our role well and were able to carry the team. 95% Jarvan, we get MVP, and this is how you could play Jarvan as a damage tank. Look at the damage dealt, 20k, most damage taken as well, 9113, really good, did well, and I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching, see you next time, peace out, ciao ciao.